Welcome our dear viewer, welcome to this show, it's the Bible journey. Thank you for joining us this day as we delve much into this discussion. And remember, we started a discussion on the plagues that hit uh, or came upon the Egyptians. And we are continuing the same part two of the same uh, idea, that is the plagues. And we want to welcome you once again and remember that you can always give us your comment and even ask your question through the social media platforms that are indicated at the bottom of your screen and we'll be getting to respond to them and uh, we'll also meet online. Thank you very much for joining us and of course we have our dear pastors who help us in the same. That is, uh, I'll start today with Pastor Peter Nyaga. Welcome Pastor to this show. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much for joining us and uh, we have next, that is Pastor Kabira Wakabira. Welcome Pastor. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you. Would you mind uh, leading us in a word of prayer Pastor? Dear Lord, allow us to get into your word, illuminate our minds together with our viewers so that together we may be able to understand how you designed salvation for us. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And uh, our dear viewer, you remember that last time we ended up with the, the second plague, that is of the frogs, and they died out even as, the, as Pharaoh asked Moses to entreat the Lord for him. But I want us to, I promised you that we'll be looking at especially verse 9 and 10 before we continue with the third and fourth plague for this day. Now, uh, pastors, I'll beg to take you back to the book of uh, Exodus chapter 8 and I'll read verse 9 and 10, which says, and Moses said to Pharaoh, accept the honor of saying when I shall intercede for you, for your servants and for your people, to destroy the frogs from you and your houses, that they may remain in the river only. So he said, tomorrow, and he said, let it be according to your word, that you may know that there is no one like the Lord our God, and the frogs shall depart from you from your houses and from your servants and from your people, they shall remain in the river only. Now, my, my big concern here is about the Lord, giving, uh, the Lord giving Pharaoh an opportunity to decide when the Lord should come in and help him. And the Lord says, uh, Moses says, decide the time that you want this thing to happen, that you want me to entreat to you to the Lord. Why is the Lord giving an opportunity to Pharaoh to decide when this calamity or this plague should end, Pastor Kabir? Um, I'll still use the same context that we've been using, mm. how great God is and his plan of redemption. Um, I'll say when Pharaoh called for Moses, he wanted entreat. Uh, my version says, verse 8 is entreat the Lord mm -hmm. that he may take away the frogs from me and from my people. This is him acknowledging God, but begrudgingly, you know, mm -hmm. let, let it go. You know, you, when you box to a corner and mm -hmm. you can almost say anything just to get away with, uh, with your sins, with the repercussions as many of us do today anyway, mm. as we'll see the entire context of it all. So when he says like that, Moses does not grant him his wish. He says, when will you want this to end? And uh, Pharaoh says, tomorrow. Probably, I'm imagining, but if he really wanted it, it would have been now. Mm. But for him to be able to say tomorrow, he, he thinks maybe he could have a plan or he could, because of, from the way I'm reading, mm -hmm. uh, he really wanted to understand what's really happening. And immediately the Bible says anyway, verse 12, Moses went and cried out, and went out and Moses cried out to the Lord concerning the frogs which he had brought against Pharaoh. And the Lord did according to the word of Moses, not according to the word of Pharaoh. Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll rather dwell on according to the word of Moses, of Moses, not according to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, in his attempt to try and uh, get in a strife with God, did really not understand that this is not a competition still. Mm. In his mind, it's a competition. He is not getting the whole idea that God wants to exalt himself and give him an opportunity for salvation. Mm -hmm. He's still dwelling on a competition. Mm. If it really was serious, it you know, if you're said, suffering, you just say immediately, "No, no, this is mm -hmm. enough for me." Yeah. But for yeah. him, he was still. I, I'm, I'm assuming he still had, he still wanted time 
for a different angle and my angle for now because it's not very clear per se mm. will be he still does not understand why God is bringing all these things. Mm. Still on the same uh, Pastor Nyaga, do you think he would be maybe probably thinking maybe I would have gotten a solution by tomorrow and <laughs> therefore he thinks okay let me see what I'll do eventually before he does it so that I can get a chance to compete even the more and uh, you know God is saying uh, it's uh, to me it appears like God is saying okay so that you can be very sure that it's me who is doing it I want you to say the time and I'll do it at that particular time do you think something of that nature applies here well, I don't want to rethink uh, that dimension. Mm -hmm. uh, however, th there may not be anything wrong even with thinking so, because God is out to prove himself mm -hmm. and to disapprove this man, Pharaoh. Remember, Pharaoh has magicians. Mm -hmm. You know, magicians were just using trickeries. So God, want, in a way, is communicating to Pharaoh mm -hmm. that the things you see me doing, these plagues, these mighty things I'm doing, are not trickeries. So time cannot uh, interfere with what I want to do. Mm -hmm. you, you can say, even now, even now, I can remove them. Even tomorrow I can remove them. Your, your, your people cannot, your magicians cannot do this, but me can. So you say any time you want. So to me, it's like uh, God is still, uh, in a sense, saying, it's, it's about me. And the, 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 the sooner you know me and you accept me, the better for you. Mm. Yeah. Wow. And uh, of course, verse 15, which now uh, helps us uh, to go to 16, the third plague, it says, But when Pharaoh saw that there was uh, relief, he, hearkened, he hardened his heart and did not heed them as the Lord had said. So now this, of course, eventually leads to the third plague, which is the plague of the lies. And maybe I'll just bring you in and uh, read verse 16 and 17. Uh, so the Lord said to Moses, Say to Aaron, Stretch out your rod and strike the dust of the land, so that it may become lies throughout all the land of Egypt. And they did so. For Aaron stretched out his hand with his rod and struck the dust of the earth, and it became lies on man and beast. All the dust of the land became light throughout all the land of Egypt. Now, the magicians, okay, before I, I go to that, uh, now there is this element, there is this progression that you have been talking about, that it has been in the waters, now he progresses to the frogs, and now he's leading again now, you know, from after the waters, now it's the land. And what did you say about this, especially the choosing of the lies to attack both human beings and animals? I don't know. Um, Before we come to mm -hmm. the plague, the, 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 the third plague, yeah. you know, this, this statement is very crucial. Yes. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he hardened his heart. I did not heed them as the Lord had said. Mm -hmm. I thought there's a, there's, a, there's a reason for this verse to end the second plague, mm -hmm. after which for the first time we see Pharaoh pleading with Moses, please go and, and on my behalf talk to your God. Mm -hmm. You know, we would expect that now uh, Pharaoh has surrendered. But th the Bible says, you know, the wording is very important. But when Pharaoh saw that there was relief. Mm -hmm. So he had given in for convenience. Exactly, and that's what the point I wanted to, to, to bring across. There are some people who look so religious mm. because of the situation they are going through. Mm. Many times become so holy. People, I mean, people become so holy, they look, they are so close to God because of trouble. Mashida Zikisha, even they don't have to do it again. Yeah, wicked ways. Yes, and, and mm. I think that this is what I'm finding here. Mm. So at times we may confuse fear. Okay? With the reverence. Eh? With the reverence. Mm. And in fact, many, many people, and, 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 and I think we need to learn, even our viewers need to learn this. Mm. You know, each individual need to ask themselves, when we are faced with the trouble, and when we are faced with plenty and we are rejoicing, mm. is our relationship with God the same? 
Uh, maybe that's why Jesus also said, uh, well, it may be out of context, but it may be very difficult for the rich to go to the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the, the poor, you know, partly the, the poor is the ones who may... But the, the, the point is, the point is, yeah. the point is when you're in pain, when you're in uh, some misery of kind, is that time when you seek the Lord and when God has given you a relief, you don't see anything mm -hmm. to do with him. Some people are very prayerful, they are praying, they are fasting, they are waking at three. These days people are waking at the middle of the night. Mm. Uh, praying hard and praying hard, man. But when God blesses them with that job, they, they forget so about I, it. So I'm finding something very interesting there. But yeah. when Pharaoh saw that there was relief, he had it. His heart. His heart. Eleb went back to normal again. Yeah. And so now we go to the third. That's what uh, leads us plague, to the When his heart plague. again is as hearted as before. Mm -hmm, yeah. mm -hmm. Now, Pastor Kabira, about the lies. Well, uh, he said how I wanted to be able to connect it. Mm -hmm. The water is dirty, is unconsumable. Mm -hmm. The places of stay are dirty by the frogs and unconsumable. The next part is even the people are not clean at all. Look at the effect of just one man hardening his heart and the repercussions that are there on everything else. Mm -hmm. The whole society we, we is suffering we take, of it. We take sin lightly, but mm. this is a good example. I wanted to now to connect with what Pastor Nyak was trying to say, mm. I mean was saying. We take sin so lightly as if it does not affect everything else. I will let him discuss uh, the symbolism of lies and uh, what the God it represents. Mm. But for me, I am bothered with why lies. Lies, uh, lies comes to the body. There are three types of lies. Mm. There is the one that gets to the head, the hair. There is one for uh, pubic region, and then there is body lice. All these are as a result of that. Uchafu. Mm. When they come, they suck blood out of a human being, and including the Bible here saying, including the, the, the kettle. Basically, they were just attaching themselves. They were there to make your life miserable. You're smart, you're clean, but still you have got lies. Mm. How, does that even, how does that even make sense? You know, it may look like small. A very small, a very small, uh, a very small insect that is less than uh, five millimeters. Mm. You know, a centimeter is, I don't know, I, you can't draw, I can't put a centimeter here. Mm. But imagine something that is so small that will trouble you because they are all over. No matter how much you shower. No matter how much you make yourself clean, you still have There's got lice. Mm. Does that even make sense? You know, the much you do, for you know, uh, I will equate it with you try to be so righteous, but with on your own you cannot be righteous you because of your own works. Mm. So the Egyptians have just moved from one disaster to another that they thought they could prevent. What did they do? Blood. God gave them an alternative. You mm. can go dig a well. And beside the river, you'll get clean water. Frogs, they, when they died, they were swept away. Or uh, you could, you know, frogs are big enough, you can throw them away. Mm. But here is something that is ticking on you. It's not around you. It is ticking on you. And this actually is the last time the magicians are able to do anything. Mm. Because it's yeah. now becoming too personal. We know when it was out there, we could deal with it. Now when it comes to you, and they're like, wait, this is now too much for mm -hmm. us. In the end, I would understand this as God was trying to call them. Apart from the symbolism it attaches on their God, God was trying to call them into repentance in a different way. Mm -hmm. It's not you who makes yourself clean. No. It is me who decides who is clean or not. Wow. Mm -hmm. I think, I think I'll, I'll, I'll explain yeah. the other half part yeah, of it. Yes, mm -hmm. and, uh, and Pastor, talking about, you know, you started by telling us, especially the three gods that were challenged by the first and uh, second plague. Mm -hmm. And now I'm wondering in the third, uh, I don't know if it transcends to the fourth plague, was, which god was under the challenge, the god of the Egyptians? Which one? There's a god called Kepra. Kepra. Kepra was a, a god of resurrection. 
Do you remember I mentioned about about the frog? Yes, mm -hmm. a goddess. Yeah, goddess. Who is the wife of the god, the creator, the Kuna? Mm -hmm. Now this Kepra is now the male god of resurrection. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, it was being represented by uh, in Egypt by a kind of a large beetle. You know this insect, the beetle. Yeah, 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 a large one. That was a symbol of that particular god. Okay. So again, God is targeting um, he, he, uh, the same God again. You, you remember we are coming from the, the, the story of frogs, mm -hmm. and they're everywhere. Yeah. They have died, and no one can resurrect them. Mm. So. Whereas the god of frogs also has been killed, there was still remaining a god who could have resurrected this other god. And this is the god called Kepler, who is actually is a male god. So the assumption is the weaker god of resurrection has died. Mm. But the stronger god of resurrection should be able, should be able to resurrect the weaker yeah, sure, god. Sure, 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 sure. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but now here, again, he's not able to do that. And also, he's, he's, he's being attacked. And uh, of, of course, people have, you know, there has been an argument what exactly was this insect? called lies. And the people have not agreed exactly what kind of an insect was this. Mm. Um, however, it, w what is clear that it came upon the humanity and, and the beast. Mm. And uh, maybe you may want to quickly uh, see a few things on this. Yes. Uh, you see the, the, the human beings were uh, of course, we are worshippers, you know, we are religious beings. And, and, and we, they used to worship these particular gods. Mm -hmm. So when they have been defiled, infected by this kind of, you know, lies or covered of insects, then they are filthy. Mm -hmm. When before God, when you are defiled, then that particular God may not be able to accept that worship. Mm. So God attacking this particular plague was targeting more wor on worship of those particular gods. And that's why also it is infecting the animals which were also being used for sacrifices. Mm -hmm. So now God has started targeting, uh, it was targeting uh, the gods, but now he's, he's targeting slowly the worshippers and the particular worship in totality. Mm. So he is breaking down that which makes these particular gods that Pharaoh has believed to be of importance because a god who is not worshipped is not a god. Mm -hmm. And because he's being worshipped and there's a worship that sacrifices, so God knows he's attacking this particular aspect of the worship and the sacrifices. And that's when we see the infection um, to animals and, 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 and both to man. Wow, wow. And uh, of course, Pastor, again, coming back to you, look at verse 18. It's the first instance, once again, that uh, something else is happening. At least in verse, in verse 8, uh, Pharaoh, the, far, the first time he gave up. But now in verse, uh, that is in verse 18, now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. So there, was, there were lies on man and beast. The first time, are they conceding defeat or uh, should they give <laughs> up now? Because in verse 19, actually, what they say is so amazing that then the magician said to Pharaoh, this is the finger of God. Uh, they are acknowledging God again. Yes, now, um, the, the, these ten plagues have a formula that Moses is using and mm. God, I, by extension. Mm. First two, you have a response. The third one you finishes you off. Mm. So the first two, you know, you'll realize uh, the third plague. So it's not as if they didn't want to do it because it would attack them, but they now tried. You, they they, didn't they tried. You know, yeah. the, you know, once again, the concept is not mm. on to them mm. that it's not a competition. Yeah. They are approaching this as a contest between the God of Moses and Aaron and our God. Mm. You know, uh, God, what makes God unique is his ability to create from nothing. Mm -hmm. You can be able, uh, human beings and science has been able to recreate, but they can only be able to recreate from something that exists. Mm. And for that, many of us are so proud thinking we are God, just because we can put a human being 
on a coma for five years, sustain them. We think we are almost becoming to God. Hmm. But then we're using God's own uh, uh, instruments to be able to pretend we can give life. We here harvesting oxygen from air and then giving it to somebody and we think we're very much ahead. If God will withdraw the oxygen all from of it air. and he says, you take now your hydrogen and uh, I don't know, I mean, take your own molecules, form your own oxygen, let's see if you can work, will not even move anywhere. Mm. This is the concept the magicians do not understand. Number one, the first people to be won over were the magicians, mm -hmm. not even Pharaoh. Mm. You know, every time Pharaoh would come, his response was, call my magicians, do this to also show them that we can also do it. Mm. He was not intent on solution. Mm. He knew he cannot even uh, provide solution. His idea was to provide a fake religion where your God can do this, so mine can do. And that is the problem with fake religions. They try to copy what God has done. They do not have their own original mm. ideas. Mm. I keep on saying, Others, for example, should define themselves with any other term apart from don't believe in God. Yeah, yeah. So what do you believe in? Tell mm -hmm. us what you believe in. Mm. Don't tell us what, what you, don't you don't believe in. Because that will be like defining darkness. And this is what the magicians are now coming to understand. Mm. That finally, it's not about competition. These people mm. have got a greater God than, than our God. Our gods. The whole, they may have mm. not converted Mm. But they are acknowledging that there is a superior God who is making things that are not making sense. Mm -hmm. and, and you know, again, looking at the same, same statement, mm -hmm. their statement, actually, yes, what they say, 19. Pastor, mm -hmm. this is the finger of God. Did they have a clue of who God is? I would say no. But, but they are saying this is the finger of God. I'm, I'm coming there. Mm -hmm. I, I would say no. Mm -hmm. But Moses, since Moses came in, he has made it very clear. God has sent me. Mm. The Lord says, let my people go come that they may worship me. Mm. So Moses is introducing to them a God. A God that they are not willing to take because they are also dealing with so many gods. Mm. So not that they knew, but they, are, they have heard. The way every other person who is living in the ignorance of God, there's a point when you start interacting with the God. There's mm. a time, a point in time when someone comes and tells you about God. Mm. So by this particular time, you remember this is now uh, after several interactions with God through Moses and these plagues. Mm. And these magicians are the ones who are there. And this particular one, they have a fact of verse 18. Verse 18, you know, is very important. Mm. Because it says, now the magicians so worked with their enchantments to bring forth lies, but they could not. Okay? Mm. They tried. They tried all they could. <laughs> to but they, you know, they, they, they tried to turn water into, into blood. It turned to it blood. Turned. They tried calling, uh, you know, frogs. They, they, could, they managed to do that. Before but they copied the symbol of, uh, you know, the stick, the yeah. Moses rod. Yes, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, I, I mean, so they've been thinking, this is just a common God. Because what this God is doing, they also, their Our gods, gods are, are doing. Able to do. So, when they are at this particular time, not even after they have trained everything, they are not able to, mm. then they say, hey, come on. Now there is a God mm -hmm. who yeah. is not like our God now. It reminds me of the instance later in the book of Daniel mm. when the three Hebrew boys mm. are thrown into the oh, furnace. Yes, yes. Then he says, Nebuchadnezzar says, says, I see one as the mm -hmm. son of man. Mm -hmm. And you know, we've always, people have been asking, how did he know yes, yes, about yes. that particular one? Now, <laughs> le let's, let's take a short break first of all. Our dear viewer, we're taking a short break and uh, we'll be back to continue this discussion, especially looking at uh, the fourth leg and going forward so that we can you know try to understand this god and you know he has already introduced himself as the lord you know very powerful a very powerful name there uh yahweh so that is what we are continuing with please don't worry. Thank 
you very much for sticking with us here on the Bible journey. Uh, I hope that you are learning much as I am and of course with me on set are uh, that is Pastor Nyaga and Pastor Kabira. Welcome back to our discussion. Thank now you. let's uh, <coughs> still remaining at the same same instance as we go forward. You know the issue of the lies again. Pastor you yeah, still yeah, had I wanted a lot to, to say I there. Wanted to make a, a, a good observation here mm. when the from verse 18 when the, the magicians try to call forth lies as God, Moses did and they were not able mm. just to let our viewers know it's true that God uh, devil has power God, devil has. has power Revelation but, but, the but, same. but but his power is limited mm -hmm. his power is limited it is only God who has absolute power his power is not limited and uh, God has demonstrated that in several incidents in the Bible. Mm -hmm. You remember in the New Testament, of course, uh, perhaps one day will be there, a man who was leaving the tomb. Mm -hmm. And uh, the, you know the story says no one would bind that man. You, he would be put under the chains, but he would break the chains. Right, uh, you know? yeah. It's a very powerful man. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, well, but when Jesus came, he just became the more powerful man. And so I, I see it here that. Um, Devil using magicians, uh, he was able to do quite a bit, mm. but he has limitations. Mm -hmm. And it's good for us as uh, you know Christians to know that if we have a trust in God, then he puts himself in, in a power that is limitless. Mm. But the devil, no matter how much he wants to use you, he's limited. There are things he cannot do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Pastor Kabira. Mm -hmm. It ends without saying was the life taken away or not mm, yeah together with as i said god mm -hmm. was using a formula of two one two one two one you know the first two you repent the last one you think on your own then he gives you two more think on your own for three times until uh, well this uh, this uh, this plague is short just like the next, after the next two, it will be long, then the next one will be short, then two long, then one short. In each of the short one, there is no record of repentance. Mm -hmm. God was really saying, see, I was right all along. It ends by saying, just as the Lord had said. said. He was not saying you'll be hard, but with the formula you're using, with the way you're hardening your heart, I don't think you'll be able to change. You know, that is not a curse. Mm -hmm. I can be able to tell it. Just like as a pastor or as a teacher once in a while, you tell a student that uh, with your drinking, with your truancy, with your delinquency, I think you will not make it very well. Mm -hmm. I am just predicting your behavior in what the likely outcome. God had said, mm. and so after the first one, he had in his heart. After the second one, he had in his heart. The third one, he didn't even need to call because by now, his heart was hardened. Of course, I'm assuming the plague went off, but this time he didn't even want. You know, for somebody to be so bitter until you don't care whether troubles continue or not now, you're so bitter that you have clogged your mind from thinking rationally or thinking well. Mm. Remember the behavior of Pharaoh is affecting the entire. Yeah, the entire. Actually, it's, uh, it, because from the next plague, I think it's where God now demarcates Goshen and the rest of Egypt. Mm. So I don't know if it was affecting the entire, uh, the entire place, but uh, somehow God used to provide answers because from the fourth one is where he says, now there will be, these ones will be affecting the Egyptians only. Mm. But it tells me about how when we harden our heart, we block our minds even from repentance. Normally that's a problem with many of us Christians. A sin repeated again and again becomes now a sin against the Holy Spirit. Mm. In essence, you no longer repent. Because, because you, the conscience is seared. You, you know, you don't feel like you're so angry, you don't even want anything. Mm. Look at Pharaoh now. He, when he's even told this is the finger of God, now he doesn't even care. Mm. His heart is hardened. He doesn't care whether, it's re, whether the life is taken away or not. But he's gotten to a point where he really doesn't care now. He's mm. just mad at all. Yeah, yeah. Before that point get, my advice has always been to my fellow Christians, before you get to that point, repentance is very good. Because it will go through uh, and you'll, you'll, people will be, will be wondering, how do you do that? You know, when you hear stories about 
Somebody murdered his entire family. Where, where is his conscience at that particular mm -hmm. time? Somebody destroyed. Any, somebody did something so intentional. I was reading some very disturbing news about a man who raped his own mother and mother-in-law. And you think, where, where is that mind coming from? Because once you clog your mind from repentance, God entreats you. He lets you come through a difficult time for you to self-reflect. And you do not. If God just withdraws a little bit, you do things that even people do. I'm trying to wonder. You, your what conscience to becomes one? dead yeah. completely. Now, Pastor, in verse, uh, verse 20, uh, mm -hmm. I want to compare it with the verse 14 of chapter 7, uh, verse 15 of chapter 7. Verse 20 says, And the Lord said to Moses, Rise early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh as he comes out, of the, out to the water, then say to him, Thus says the Lord, let my people go, that they may serve me. Then in verse 15 of chapter 7 says, Go to Pharaoh in the morning when he goes out to the water, and you shall stand by the river banks to meet him. And the rod which was turned to serpent you shall take in your hand. Now, Pharaoh, it seems a tradition, you know, like the Bible says, as the manner, it was the manner of Paul, the manner of Jesus Christ. So, is the manner of Pharaoh to go to the river is it tied to the issues that we are talking about life he's always going to get life in the river every morning before he, ta he starts his work well <laughs> I, I mean, I well it's exactly. also included in 9 13 for yeah. purposes of context yeah. it's also the same thing yeah 9 13 the same thing repeated over and over again yeah you see the context here as we said mm -hmm. god the contest here is between God of Moses and the gods of, of the Egyptians. Mm -hmm. Egyptians. Mm -hmm. And uh, as we mentioned earlier in our last episodes that these gods, many of them were in the river Nile. So the frequency of, of Pharaoh, perhaps repeated, going, uh, being seen going to the, the river mm -hmm. could be written to that. But also again, we, we, we want us to appreciate that uh, perhaps then we didn't have uh, showers that we have today. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and perhaps he would be going out to take shower. Mm -hmm. and, and we remember the story of uh, David also. You know, when he's looking from his, his house and he sees a woman bathing. So people used to go to bathe in the river. Okay, mm -hmm. but we would have more weight in arg our argument that in, in this particular situation, I think Pharaoh had a constant consultation with his gods, and some of these gods were in the river Nile, perhaps was doing sacrifices because you know this is an intense moment. It's an intense moment. His people are crying. Uh, it's also here. There is no peace. In fact, you know, when these, these plagues are coming, they're not sparing him because he's a king, mm -hmm. the pharaoh. When the flies are coming on him, also, he's scratching himself everywhere. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he, him going out the river several times to consult with his ghost can be understood, or either he is going out for shower. Either of these two could be mm -hmm. true, or both of them could yeah. be true. Pastor, as as you okay, you still have something to add there. And no, not not on that. Maybe yeah, yes, you yes, you Pastor, you can come in as mm -hmm. uh, we extend also to the issue of you know God demarcating that it shall happen to only your people, but my people I'll protect them. Um, I will say uh, this is the formula that uh, Moses is using. Mm. He begins with him in the morning, every time. The first, I, I mean, in batches of three, as I said, two, one, two, one, two, one. The first batch, he begins with him in the morning. Then the, the next uh, plague, he says, ten. And then he ends by a small plague to summarize. Mm -hmm. Then he begins again and begins a day. Mm -hmm. As Pastor said, it's, it may not mean a lot, but it was more of a custom. My reading says it was a custom for the Egyptians to wake up in the morning and face the Nile as a way of worship for them. Mm -hmm. So probably Pharaoh also, because uh, he, they used to build their, where, where do kings stay now? Palace. Mm -hmm. They used to build their palace next to, the, next to River Nile. You know, the, the God part, you know, all for religiosity and all that worship because of it included. So it was very appropriate when he's going to talk to his God, somebody comes in between. Mm -hmm. So in the end, I will say it's more of, it's a, it's a pattern of Moses' writing 
and how he, he approached things. But at the same time, it could be uh, a rebuke to Pharaoh that his gods are not working out for the time being. Mm -hmm. Now, let my people go that they may serve me is the wording. But Pharaoh keeps on saying, go and sacrifice. They are not asking for sacrifice. No. They are asking for, let my people go. Mm -hmm. It's not a compromise. You know, Pharaoh is trying to bring a compromise. That you can go, but don't go far, for example. That is what he said in the second. Mm. Or you can go, but then come back. Go and sacrifice. But the wordings of God were, let my people go, that they may serve me. Or else, if you not let my people go, behold, I'll send swarms of flies on you and your servants. Now, then God gets into the demarcation of it all. Um, the first three, everybody really needed to be able to know. You see, by now, only Pharaoh is left alone. Before, the Israelites had also asked, how will we know it's you, God? And God said, told Moses, put your hand uh, the there are miracles Impressive. that will come out, you know, mm -hmm. you'll see like this. Then the people were believing. But remember, also people had issues with being saved. You remember if you can remember our previous, yeah yeah? yeah? yeah, yeah. because they kept on asking like, why is God staying this much? So my assumption was, God allowed these people also to see the things that are happening. And slowly by slowly, people were being won over. People were being won over. Finally, the magicians are the last group to be won over. By saying, this is the finger of God, and I think we're done. Mm. And so by then, the next phase of it all now does not have magicians. The next plagues do not have magicians. The next plagues do not have a competition. Mm -hmm. This is exclusively for Pharaoh to realize and to come back to his senses. Of course, he does not come back to his senses. Mm. But the Israelites now have understood. They are now getting ready to be able to do this. So when he now he says, now, tomorrow this shall be your sign he's giving a sign to the israelites now i want you now to be able to say you people were doubting me now mm. let me try and uh, give you a sign there'll be that difference there'll be that demarcation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you will know you're a special people you are asking how will you know now you now know you know you mm -hmm. wanted to know how special you are now you know wow. people are making you suffer look at how special you're going to be. I think it will be a good privilege for me mm -hmm. to be able to feel that kind of God's intervention. It's a good one. It's yeah, a very I, good. I, I yes, wanted Pastor. to bring on something here important. In verse number 25, mm -hmm. uh, that Pastor alluded to, yes. then Pharaoh called for Moses and Aaron and said, go sacrifice to your God in, in the land, the land. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. not away mm -hmm. in Egypt. Yeah. Now, this this very very important for us to note. Mm -hmm. Moses has always pleaded, that of course, God through Moses, let my people come out and that they may go and sacrifice to me or serve me, mm -hmm. worship me. Then says, okay, you go and worship, go and sacrifice mm -hmm. to your God, but in this land. Remember, I said. Uh, the the god that is being attacked here mm. is the god of god worship is, yeah. you know it's, it's about worship mm. and of course you know the lies and the flies the same same god mm. kepra the same same god of mm. selection mm -hmm. who was in charge of worship so it's about worship and i want us to see how worship is compromised you know it doesn't take the devil to tell us completely do away with worship or your worship pattern and uh, learn a different way of worship. He always allows us to worship God the way we know, but introduces an element of deviation mm. in that which God has, has prescribed. Mm. And so God was very clear. You cannot worship and sacrifice me here for, for, for maybe for because of time for two reasons. The land is already defiled. Even the Egyptians are not able to sacrifice and worship their God mm -hmm. because their gods are defiled. The land is defiled. They could not sacrifice. Mm. So how can Israel sacrifice in a land which is defiled? Mm -hmm. Of course, Mo Moses mentions <laughs> that in verse 26. Again. Yes. Yeah. Then number two, um, God was to be worshipped by the Israelites away from the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. Okay? That is where God hence prescribed. 
And so because you already said that Egypt is a, a representation of sin and yes. slavery. Yes, yes. So yes. they can't worship freely in slavery and in sin. But you see, no, we, we, we sacrifice in sin, mm -hmm. but it's a people who have started a journey of salvation. Mm -hmm. you know, people who sacrifice are people who know God. You don't, you don't sacrifice if you don't know God. Yeah. So for the children of Israel to be seen that they know God, they need to begin their journey out of Egypt. The way we Christians, we are in a journey out of the Egypt of sin. Mm. And so we keep on sacrificing every day. Okay? So the children of Israel need them to be set off from Egypt and in their journey then they couldn't sacrifice. But then Pharaoh says, no, no, no. That's okay, but still you can sacrifice here. Mm -hmm. I mean, you can get a lamb here and kill and you sacrifice. That no is a compromise, and that's how com compromise comes in our faith. And, and I think it's good for viewers, uh, even us ourselves here, to, to, to ask ourselves, mm. are there times then we, when we allow compromise? Okay? Mm -hmm. I mean, this is, God, God has said, worship on Sabbath. It is, but worshiping is good. Yeah. But you can worship on Sunday. Can worship on Monday. Mm -hmm. Can worship on want. Tuesday. Mm -hmm. You can worship. Provided at, at worship. Eh, people, uh, you know, it's it's a heart. It is a heart. No, that's a compromise. That's a compromise. Mm -hmm. God, God says you a man should marry a woman, but all the other people saying it doesn't matter. If, if, if I have feelings for Ratemo, that's, that's okay. Mm -hmm. That's compromise. So always compromise comes with a lot of reasoning and logic. It starts it is, slowly. It starts slowly. Builds up. Yes, mm -hmm. but I'm, I thank God because Moses is very keen. He says, ah, no. It's not just about sacrificing. Mm. It's sacrificing in the right way. Mm -hmm. At the right place. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Yeah. Wow. And <laughs> then let me add, in terms of the consistency mm. of God's word, it does not change. The message is still the same and it's very clear. Whereas Pharaoh, Pharaoh is trying to give an alternative. Mm. But even this one is not. You know, if you read Pharaoh's responses, in isolation, you will say Pharaoh is a very nice guy. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, look at when, I mean, let me first speak about the consistency of God's word. The first plague said, Moses told, that was in verse 16, the Lord God of the Hebrews has sent me to you saying, let my people go that they may serve me in the wilderness. Very consistent. He says, let my people go that they may be able to serve me. That was the first. Mm -hmm. Of course, we know all Pharaoh said, he, uh, Pharaoh said, tried to say, but you don't have to go. I'm not going to let you go. Then the second plague also comes with the same. Chapter 8, verse 1. Let my people go. I'm just paraphrasing that part. Let my people go that they may be able to serve me. Mm. What is Pharaoh's response again? Uh, you may, I will let the people go that they may sacrifice to the Lord. The third time also again, the same words. Let my people go that they may serve me. God has not edited his wordings depending on the pressure that is there. No. You know, ideally it will be like, maybe Pharaoh has come closer, mm. so I, I can also come closer so that we meet somewhere in the middle. But God is very consistent, again by saying let my people go, verse 20, let my people go that they may serve me. Mm. Again, you know, the message is still the same. Mm. And Pharaoh is providing different responses for every time. Mm, the responses the are not bad. Mm. Let me say like that. Mm. But there are compromise. What person is saying? I'm just trying to add. Look at the consistency of God. Same thing again and again. Mm. I didn't say anything. I just said, let my people go that they may be able to serve me. Pharaoh says, but you can go and worship him and then come back. No. Mm. Let my people go. And, and you know, it, in, in verse, uh, mm -hmm. what is that verse? Is it verse 28? So Pharaoh said, I let you go that you may sacrifice to the Lord your God in the wilderness, mm -hmm. only you shall not go very far away. Intercede for, for me. me. You see how it looks nice? Mm -hmm. in, in the beginning, it looks nice. But that is not God's command. Uh, what I want to say is the immutability of God's command. Mm -hmm. It does not change, no matter what circumstances. Mm -hmm. At no particular point did God change his wording no. and his concept to fit in Pharaoh. Yeah, I know Pharaoh is saying, go and pray for me, intercede for me. Moses and Aaron will have said, wow, that's a nice idea. Mm. Finally, this guy is a... No, 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 but that is not what God had sent them. He had not sent them to go and come back or pray for Pharaoh. That is his own problem. God was saying, let my people, my people go. go. That was, wow. So I'm hoping that whenever we read the Bible, we can see this consistency in Genesis and in Exodus. Jesus will not die 
and do away with the Old Testament. No. And then you say that what was written in the Old Testament is no longer relevant in New Testament. The practices that were done there are not practices. The consistency of God, God's word is what is good to me. Mm -hmm. That I know what my grandfather believed is what I believe is what my daughter and son will be able to believe and their grandchildren children will be able and, and that way the bible is the word of god for ah. its consistency yes pastor now as we summarize on that because eventually moses intercedes for pharaoh mm -hmm. and uh, at least in verse uh, verse 31 uh, is it from verse 29 and moses said in i indeed i am going out from you and i will entreat the lord that the swarm of flies may depart tomorrow from pharaoh from his servants and from his people but let pharaoh not deal deceitfully anymore in not letting the people go to sacrifice <laughs> to the lord so moses went out from pharaoh and entreated the lord and the lord did according to the word of moses he removed the swarm of flies from pharaoh from his servants and from his people, not one remained, but Pharaoh hardened his heart at this time also. Neither would he let the people go, Pastor, in, <laughs> in summary, because of time. Uh, yeah, you see, th this is um, hypocrisy. W what you can call pretense and passive um, repentance. Repentance. Mm -hmm. Okay? So that we know, uh, that the story ends, we know that Pharaoh did not actually love God. He didn't have that reverence of God. He didn't acknowledge that this is a true God. And he didn't also to, to pay homage to him. He was afraid of the things God was doing. So if these things are removed, it doesn't mean this God. Mm. He is very much uncomfortable with this God who is doing all these things to him. And so, if Pastor Wakabera will come and talk to that God to stop these things, that's all I need. Mm. So please, and how much can I give? <laughs> how much can I offer for you to stop what you're doing? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? Mm -hmm. Th that's why I'm looking at, at, at Pharaoh. He was willing to do anything to, to, to let God stop these things. But he never gave his heart. Now, look at this, where Jesus speaks and says, these people confess me by their mouths, but their hearts far are far away from me. Mm -hmm. Exactly, that's what we, we, we see Pharaoh doing here. He, from, as, as Peter was saying, from the outside, you may think Pharaoh is a very good guy. Actually, he's come to appreciate God, as mm -hmm. even pleading, Pastor, pray for me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> pray for me. Mm -hmm. But his heart is not in this prayer. He is, he is, he is looking for a painkiller to heal the pain that he's going through. And if that, that pain is healed, then he has nothing to do with the cause of the, the, the sickness or that pain. Mm. So, so th there's, a, there's a guy who is dealing with God from a superficial you know, aspect of, of, of understanding who God is. Mm. He doesn't want to get deeper and surrender his heart. And uh, I think the constantly why the, the Bible repeats and says he handed his heart so that we know where the problem of Pharaoh mm -hmm. was. Not in the skin, not in the, in the, in the plagues. It was in the heart. In the heart and yeah. if God would arrest the heart of Pharaoh and transform the heart of Pharaoh, we couldn't see all these, these plagues. Mm. And God wouldn't stop them until he is done with the heart wow. of Pharaoh. Wow. wow, Pastor, you are concluding remarks. You may lie to man, but you cannot lie to God. Sure. Moses, when he had uh, the words of Pharaoh, he even tells him, I hope you're not lying this time. Mm. You know, <laughs> he was convinced, this is a man of God, finally convinced that this guy could be really a genuine rebel. But I'm imagining God will be like, see, I told you. Mm. Because you can lie to man. You can appear pious. But you, before God, he knows, like Pastor is saying, you're just doing it for the pain to end, for the trouble, for the things to end, but you don't believe in God. Mm. So I believe this is now, you, you see him lying to Moses, mm. but God still knew, as usual it says, but Pharaoh had in his heart at this time also, again. Ah, so ah. in the end, you can lie to man, you can lie right. to pastors, but you can never lie to lie God. To he God. sees you're just calling to him because you just want help, not because you want him. Well, thank you. Thank you, pastors. Uh, because of time, we'll have to end it there. And of course, our dear viewer, thank you very much for being with us on this discussion. Remember, the concluding remark is you can lie to man, you can lie to pastors, but you can't lie to God. We have to be sincere and repent. Learning just a lesson, drawing a lesson from what Pharaoh is doing here. 
when he's so pressed and the pressure is too much, he calls upon the Lord through Moses to intercede. But again, when he's relieved of that, of that pressure, then he forgets about God and he's so comfortable and he thinks, okay, we can continue with the same, same competition, the same, same thing that we have been doing. Because for him, it's about competition. But to God, he's out to prove that he's the only true God. Thank you very much for being with us on this discussion. Remember to leave your comments and uh, questions on the social media platforms indicated at the bottom of your screen. And uh, thank you very much for being with us. Until next time, we'll end with the word of prayer from Pastor Nyaga. Our gracious Father in heaven, if there's a lesson that we need to pick from this, is that you're so much interested with our souls. Mm. The Lord wants us to know that we don't need to harden our heart like Pharaoh did and seem to have a superficial knowledge and appreciation of who you are because of the challenges and tribulations we are going through because we want you to come and solve them for us. But we have no intention of surrendering our lives to you. My Father, I pray that may you guide us, even our viewers, to know how to submit themselves to your leadership and to your kingdom that you can guide them and you can control them and you can prepare them for the soon coming. Mm -hmm. Is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you very much. Done.